The Nest Box program is one real key way which we can engage with the community from school kids all the way through to mums and dads and farmers on their land and it's a great way in which we were able to get people to experience things that aren't normally around and because they're nocturnal species we were able to show a whole range of threatened species in this neck of the woods. So we'll have a look inside. Wow, magnificent. Two sugar gliders. Don't they look fantastic? Well, Barrandoot has particularly targeted three main arboreal, arboreal meaning tree dwelling species. And there are two types of gliders, the sugar, which is a relatively common species, and the, the rare or vulnerable species, which is the squirrel glider, a larger version of the sugar. And the third is a chewin or brush tail fascagar. And the weird thing about those three animals is that they all rely on tree connections and corridors and avenues of, of vegetation, but two are principally involved with um, feeding on nectar and insects, and the other is a carnivore. It's a, it's a species which is reliant on certainly the insect component, but can eat anything from birds' eggs to, to birds themselves. And so a weird combination, but all species reliant on hollows in trees and also connections and corridors of vegetation. So the key thing that we're doing here is making connections, planting small shrubs to give diversity, and then the amazing thing is making a bridge of trees so that they link to these big old remnants. So the corridors are providing food, the nest boxes are providing shelter. They're the homes of the future for all the animals that our new corridors will be providing some tucker for. I think the educational element, it's, it's just fantastic because we get to see something which is not really obvious, being, being nocturnal species. We're not normally out and, and seeing them and that's also where some of the groups are particularly getting into remote cameras, so infrared cameras, which is another window into what happens at night. So yeah, Landcare, Landcare and in larger, more traditional farming enterprises, it's, I think it just gives that window into what, what the potential is for wildlife that are using our areas. In our district, we approach people uh, where we could see it would be a very strategic place to have some boxes. Uh, and uh, many people who own bush blocks uh, have just such young trees, they really have no old hollow trees at all basically. So they approach us, uh, some of them. So it's ready for an expansion now. We want to put more up because we can see that there's really still a limiting factor is the number of hollows out there. It'll be a hundred years before a lot of these trees develop any holes. So we're in it for the long term. Our boxes uh, will last 20 or 30 years. I think we're building them out of very good material and painting them as well, so they're extremely robust. We've got a pretty good formula for a, a really durable seven ply plus um, material, so it's thick, it's durable, it's got a good insulation, we make sure we use screws, we make sure we have drainage holes, we preclude water from getting in and that there's no gaps and we have a regular maintenance program. There's nest boxes and there's nest boxes and there's a whole heap of different designs that are going to suit particular animals. And it's not just arboreal mammals that people will, might be interested in, it's everything from small birds like partilotes through to, through to king parrots and rosellas and everything in between and beyond. And probably the, the key thing beyond the obvious size of the box is the, the type and size and orientation of the nest box opening because that's the critical component which dictates whether a a uh, possum, a brush tail possum, through to something tiny like a sugar glider might, might be able to utilise a nest box. So it's, it's the smallest diameter is generally what the animal is going to try to get into so that something larger and a potential predator is not going to be able to get into it. So you need to place the boxes in the coolest trees you possibly can. Dense crowns, when you look up, if you can see mostly blue sky, it means there's a heck of a lot of heat coming in in summer. Look up and make sure that the crown is dense. Mostly leaves, not much sky. And if it's cool enough when you walk under it, it feels, ah, that's the tree you'd put a nest box under. There's a couple of ways that we traditionally go about our nest boxing, and that's, that's with the, the ladder and, and going up. And that's the best in many respects because it's nothing like being nose to nose with a glider or a, or a tune at close range. And you really get to see every 
every whisker and it's a fantastic enterprise but probably increasingly there's technology now that we're using such as pole cameras and other remote cameras and they're they're a great advantage in being able to be on the ground and so we, we can avoid some of the occupational health and safety issues of, of being two metres up a ladder and beyond and it enables lots of people at the ground level to, to see what we're seeing. It's a tremendous thing that we get so many animals in the boxes. The occupancy rate on any day um, is uh, average 20% of the boxes have got uh, squirrel gliders present. Uh, and it's not the same boxes every night because they have to shift a lot. It's important to have a, a range of environments that we're covering from, from hilltops through to gullies and it helps us to delineate that there's at different times of the year that different species will use either the gullies or the hilltops and that's partly dependent on what's flowering and what what amount of food resources are there? The most heartening news, I think, um, is with the Fasca gale. Uh, I think it's one of Victoria's rarest mammals, and it was locally extinct. And since then, uh, they've been found up to 10 kilometres up this way. They're, in fact, in the bush just behind us. We're finding their nests all over the country because we've made corridors for them to travel and uh, nest boxes for them to be safe in. So it's extremely heartening to bring a species from local extinction back into the landscape.